Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning moves to the Niger Delta with regards to the Petroleum Industry Act. Uh, the, of course, Nigerian security agencies have uh, threatened, of course, to do what is necessary to maintain law and order. And that is after uh, a, a group of Niger Delta um, well, militants, I guess, you know, have also put out statements, um, you know, saying that there would be chaos in the Niger Delta um, with their disagreements concerning the Petroleum Industry Act. This morning, we are speaking with Uzoma Nkem Abonta, as a member House of Representatives in Abia. We're also going to be joined by another guest uh, in a, just a few seconds. But well, starting with Mr. Nkem Abonta, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, viewers. Thanks for joining us. I, I, I want you to know, also start with your own analysis on the Petroleum Industry Act. Uh, there's those who, you know, completely, you know, uh, you know, see this as fraudulent and say the president shouldn't have gone on to assent to it. And then there's also those who say that, you know, it's really just misunderstood. Uh, so let's get your views on, on, the, on the act itself. W what are your thoughts? Well, thank you very much. Um, I will want to say that in the arts uh, could be said to be the beginning of a good thing. I of the dummy find into law. Yeah, we're having a you know some struggle with uh, with uh, misconnection, so we're going to have to you know reconnect with uh, Mr. Uzoma in Kemabonta. He's a member representing uh, a member in the House of Representatives uh, in uh, Abia State, um, and the conversation mostly is on the Petroleum Industry Act. Uh, um, uh, militants have threatened to go on with you know uh, chaos in the Niger Delta. Uh, because they completely disagree with the act, you know, and we hope that we can have a better conversation this morning on on the little details here and there that may be causing this uh, chaos. We're also meant to be joined by Mujahid Asari Dukubo, a former leader of the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta. As we try to reconnect with them, um, it's a it's 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 a lot of drama, you know. And I also have done. Um, I'm sure you also have, you know, looked at those little details concerning the 30 percent and the three percent you know and the way that it has been um you know some people would say misunderstood mm -hmm. uh to you know and interpreted as 30 percent moving to going to the north you know while three percent is going to the south you know when you say it that way it obviously already sounds a little fraudulent but you know there's also been people who have gone to look closer at it and gotten to you know put up points that show that it may not be exactly the way it has been painted Yes, and that's exactly what I would like to explain. Now, with the PIA, first of all, it was a widely celebrated event. The fact that the president gave his assent to a bill that has gathered dust for about 20 years. You know, so yes, people said, oh, fantastic. Good one that the president went ahead to sign this into law. Now, the controversy really became... Um, or rather came around when we started to see the reaction of leaders in Niger Delta to this. And um, we saw people say, you know, just like you mentioned, you know, groups in the Niger Delta threatened that they will begin to destroy oil installations in the Niger Delta um, on the basis that, and on the basis of the understanding of the PIA, which is according to them, that you're taking money from the South and giving it to the North, or taking uh, money that, you know, generated from oil and all of that to um, develop frontier basins and oil exploration. So when they see, oh, 30% going to the North, they freak out, and 3% going to the going to Niger Delta communities, they're saying, this feels like, you know, you're cheating us. This, this just seems, you know, unfair. But, you know, re recent, you know, um, publications that we've seen that really went ahead in detail to break this down tries to give a different, you know, understanding and perspective to the PIA. And according to what we've seen, I'm going to read out quotes, you know, from yeah. this publication. It said that the 3%, or it went on to explain, that the 3%, you know, that, that is going to host communities is, is from the operational expenditure of oil companies as the OPEX of oil companies. So this 3% we're talking about is from the operational expenditure of oil companies. But the 30% that is going to frontier basis is 
will be set aside by the NNPC from its profit oil and profit gas. Yes, yes. So I think that's the first distinction we have to make, that the source of this 3% and 30% are different. It's not 30% of this particular you know, pool of money that we have. We're taking 30% of this whole money to the north yeah. for oil exploration and giving just 3% to the south. No, it's the fact that the 3% is generated from the operational expenditure of oil companies, which is a lot. And they went on to do, you know, rough calculations to say this would be about, about let, let's get that exact detail, dollars. about $200 billion. dollars. Yes. Iron. So well, an estimate, iron. an estimate is going to be about $200 billion, right? That's from the 3% from operational expenditure. But the 30% of profit oil and profit gas would now be about just 60 billion because like i mentioned the source of both fund is not the same so that's the first distinction that they've tried to make you know that the origin of this is basically um ignorance that you know people have not been able to have a grasp on the facts of this matter so it went on to say that um people saying um this money is just going to the not the north and that before now before the pia the Fund for exploration had just been in the Chad Basin. But the PIA expands this bracket to also include states, other states in Nigeria that are not even from the north, states like Anambra and Benue. Yeah. You know, so that people should also be happy to see that not just the north, but that money would also be invested into other states like Anambra and Benue to search for other, oil. Other frontier basins. Exactly, basins. other frontier basins. Yeah. There's the Sokoto, there's the Benue, there's the Anambra, you know, there's Eboi, there's Benue, there's Lagos, there's Taraba, there's in, there's Ondo, there's Ogum. So, from my understanding, right, um, not everybody in the Niger Delta might have access to this information or go ahead to read it in detail. But that's why you have the federal government and the National Orientation Agency that we keep talking about. They are supposed to explain these things for the common man to understand. Don't you agree with me? Oh, well, they're supposed um, to break this down because when people keep talking about where's the NOA, where's the NOA, this is what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They're supposed to, I mean, if you're, if you're bringing up a new law, Yes, we know that you're supposed to bring every stakeholder on board to make them understand, you know, what it is and bring in their opinion as well. But there also has to be that point where you explain to people because people, are mis pe people misunderstand this thing. They see 30%, oh, I'm being cheated, 3%, oh, you're, you're being unfair to me. But if the government, wh why do we have a Minister of Information? Why do we have a National Orientation Agency? It is their job to be able to explain this to the common man so they don't run with the information that, oh, they're being, oh. They're, they're being cheated or being unfairly treated. Oh, well, well, that's the reason why we're discussing uh, this on the breakfast today. Absolutely. Um, we're going to once again speak with our guest, uh, Uzama Inkemabonta. Can you hear us uh, now, sir? Mr. Inkemabonta, can you hear us? I can hear us clearly. Okay. Welcome uh, I think, back. Uh, this, uh, the sound is better now. Please go ahead. Yeah, like I was trying to say, um, the act itself now failed to satisfy the yearning of certain persons and seems to have picked up some sections on building. Yes, we are doing now we have uh, a, a petroleum act that is comprehensive, that has unbundled the NNPC and all what we But if you look at the story now, you see that the Niger Delta has been grossly substantial. Uh, How can you take 30% of whatever emerging profits of the wife to begin to prospect for oil when we already found oil where people are suffering, you now give them factory 3%. We were told during the discussion that oil will soon be uh, uh, something that is not useful again. Therefore, we need to mine all the oil we have and sell. If that is true, then why not keep the mine of the ones you've seen already that is commercially valued than going to prospect elsewhere? So the totality of the deal still leaves the oil production areas still struggling, still a uh, uh, spectator in the industry and not particular. However, I think that um, having gotten an act now, we should also begin to press for an amendment and dialogue over it. But as presently signed by Mr. President, it's not changing the South South and oil producing areas, which is not fair anymore. It's not. Mr. Nkema Bonta, um, 
there is an, uh, some analysts that have pointed out that the 3% uh, that is uh, being projected for oil communities may even be way higher than this 30 percent, uh, you know, that uh, is being stated for frontier states um, because they are not gotten from the same source. The 3 percent is uh, coming from, uh, uh, from um, um, oil, explore, ex oil licenses and, of course, oil exploration licenses from the oil companies going to be in, in, uh, that are going to be in the Niger Delta. But the 30% is from profit oil and profit gas, which really sometimes is really not so much money. I do not think that this calculation is correct. If they think it's correct, why would they not put it out first? Can they tell us the earnings from oil? Can they be clear and transparent enough to tell us from the existing record what has been gotten in all this? They cannot. This is just what they are trying to teach now, to propagate now, to cushion the uh, um, state now. I do not think so. It is a bit of mathematics. There's no way 30% will be less compared to 2%. Even if you look at it from the gross profit, from which mathematics will you do, it, it, it is short-changing. It's not correct. So let them put all the figures out there in the public domain so we can also look at it. Okay, Mr. Abonta, um, I understand what you said and where you're coming from regarding, you know, if 30% is really lesser than the 3%, then why, the, why, why is the federal government not putting the information out there? You know, that's on the back of what I mentioned that, you know, the federal government really does need to do a lot of enlightenment, you know, regarding the facts of this matter. But um, according to, you know, the PIA, this 30%, I want us to be able to make that distinction, Mr. Abonta, if you can hear me clearly. Um, according to what we know with the PIA, the 30%, first of all, is not going to any community. That means no community would receive cash to say, this is what we're giving you. Unlike what's happening with the host communities, that the host communities are actually receiving this fund you know, to develop their, their area, right? So that's the first difference. So it's not as though um, money are being, monies are being given to you know, communities in the northern part of Nigeria. They're not, they're not getting this money. The money is just, you know, to explore different parts of the country for oil. And it's not just the north. It's also Lagos. It's Ogun. It's Ondo. It's Sokoto. It's Benue. It's Taraba. So I think, you know, these are points that we need to actually understand so we can all, you know, speak on it from a place of, place of you know, understanding. Also, um, to, to mention that this 30% and 3%, why we're saying that, you know, according to the analysis, we've seen that the 30% might be lesser than the 3% is because they're not from the same source. So, Mr. Bonte, the facts that we have with the PIA is that the 30% going for exploration of oil would be coming from the profit oil and profit gas. And this money is basically the NMPC's share of the profits of its production sharing contract. This means that this 30% basically is what the NMPC would get after, you know, they have actually gone ahead to distribute um, what they need to other sources. So that's why it seems like it's going to be a very meager amount. But the 3% really will be coming from the operational expenditure of these oil companies. So when we do the math, it then seems that the 30% going for oil exploration is way lower, going to be about just 60 billion. Or from 2019. Yes, from 2019 estimates billion. that we saw, um, if we're going to go by that, the 30% is going to be about 60 billion for oil exploration, right? While the one for the 3% going to host communities will be about 200 uh, billion. That, that's right. So that really is the fact. So I'm asking you now, based on this, this information that we have, um, once again, do you think that the government should have been able to give the people enough information for them to have you know, the power you know, of course, information is power to know that it's not exactly as they see it, but the fact that, you know, the information needed to be put out there, Mr. Abonta. Yes, so we are, yeah, yeah, argument, the argument is very persuasive, but it's lame. It's not thorough. It, let, let me begin to analyze it. Okay. If what you are saying now is correct, why didn't they put it in public domain? Why didn't they educate people? Why didn't they campaign? On, on you. Why didn't they make it total? But let, let me also tell you, the law also say that the frontier will not defend cash to anybody. It's, it, 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 it's, a bit, um, it's a joke. I know how budgets are being spent in Nigeria. 
Now, who is going to handle the thirty percent? Who is going to control the frontier? Who is managing the frontier account? Where will it be spent? Even if you don't give people cash in the frontier money, but it is spent in a particular area, in a particular center, in a particular manner. So that what we're saying is, we do not think numerically this figure. Uh, it doesn't balance, it doesn't tally with us. And why the stupidity? Why the, the urgency? Why the cut short in procedure? What, what, what is surrounding the whole thing secretly? Why were they not too thorough? So this mathematics now, or arithmetic we are now trying to do, can we further convert it positively to the understanding of everybody? Mr. Now, Mr. who is going to manage the frontier? Where would they begin to? And let me also ask you, must you put more emphasis in looking for unknown when you've not completed the loan? Okay, Mr. Bonta, on the, on the back of that, I need to ask you, right, oil exploration actually happened, you know, for us to discover, you know, places that, we, that, that, that there were oil, basically, in, in Nigeria. Oh. So are you saying that um, um, the people of the Niger Delta would not want us to go ahead and explore other parts of Nigeria where there might be oil for our greater good? No, 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 no. They, they should. We must continue to exploit for oil, but emphasis to be given to what you have. Uh, people will always say that uh, a, a, a plate of goat head at, on their table is uh, better and preferred than the goat in the bush. You are not sure of where it is. I'm not saying they shouldn't prefer for oil. We must keep looking for oil, but not at the detriment of the wealth we have already found. What we are saying is that there should be a fairer treatment of the oil position already. There should be a fairer treatment of it. So that where we are also prospecting, will also uh, have faith that they also get good treatment when oil is eventually found. We should uncover all the oil. We should prospect for oil because um, oil appears to be our main state of, uh, uh, of our economy. Therefore, anything that will increase the uh, availability of oil, we support. All right. Uh, Mr. Bonta, I, wa I want us to move away from the bill now and then look really closer at, um, well, you know, still taking off uh, th thoughts from the 3%. Um, there still is, you know, the 13% derivation fund that is sent to the um, Niger Delta, Niger, um, or to uh, oil producing states. Aside that, there's 3% that gets to the NDDC. That also is for the Niger Delta. Um, if you're adding another 3% now from the uh, Petroleum Industry Act, that sounds like it's a, it's a lot of funds that are being directed to the Niger Delta and oil producing states. Do you think that over time, the state governments have done well enough, and that includes the NDDC, have done well enough in helping the Niger Delta and oil producing states uh, to be better with the amount of money that has been budgeted and has been accrued to them in the, la in the last couple of decades? Yeah, the problem with uh, Niger Delta and NDDC is a different type of fish entirely. Actually, uh, money has been pumped into NDDC. But you can see a whole lot of mismanagement, and even right now, going on, if these monies are properly managed and harnessed, if the communities and the host communities are also involved directly, it will give a greater advantage. But in, in all sincerity, a lot of money has been produced or, or uh, pumped into Niger Delta areas. Yeah, but, the, yeah, but the, why I'm asking this is because I don't see agitation from the Niger Delta youths and from these, you know, bodies here and there in the Niger Delta, and of course, including in Abia State, I don't see agitation concerning, you know, the 3% that gets to the NDDC and the 13% derivation fund and the failure of the government at the state level to utilize these funds well enough. There are pictures of, uh, uh, that uh, were released a couple of days ago of our area market in Abia State, where you're from, um, that showed a very, very sad picture of what that market is and the roads there. So why isn't there, you know, that much attention focused on the state governments and their own failures? Yes, the, the next question is, are, are state governments allowed a free hand in NDDC? No. No, the answer is no. But therefore, I should think that we should go back to Grand table to redirect and reorder the expenditure pattern in NDDC. 
Because what we have now is, is, is huge fraud. What we have now is beautiful. Much like this current is going on. So we, we should still go back and um, destroy it. Otherwise, the people, the masses, will continue losing. Yeah, well, but, the, the, I mean, you're, you're a House of Reps member for, for Abia State. Yes. So who, who would you say needs to be saying these things, or who do you, who do you say that these, uh, this attention needs to be focused on? Sorry? Come back. I'm saying you are a part of the government in Abia State. So who would you say that the attention needs to be focused on? Oh, well, the NDDC board and the management, and then should be designed. Should be redesigned and make it in a way that it's difficult to spend money without a proper analysis, without a proper consultation, without a proper study. Who does the budget of the NDDC? The states are not involved. The committees are not involved. Somebody sits down somewhere, draw a budget that, can you imagine an NDDC budget doing water high tank in an area where there's no water? So you see mountain high tank or desert high tank that you do? You, you see funny things. So the community ought to be involved. I mean, the only political community don't force on them what is not desired. So, Mr. Abonsa, really, um, when we have the facts, you know, on the table, let's say the government comes out to begin to enlighten people on, you know, what these 3% versus 30% represents, do you think that the people of the Niger Delta will have any more grievance? Well, if you, if you completely teach them or make them understand to their satisfaction, why will not? They will not. Presently, my own view is, why we take the 3% to keep arguing for more? It's like I said, the act is now a beginning of better things to come. At least we've moved forward from where we were. So, uh, while we experiment, uh, the law is not cast on iron. So, we can only begin to ask amendment as we begin to practice it, as we begin to see the fallouts, if they will be sincere. Now, a steering committee is being put in, in, in place. How are you involving uh, the host committees in the steering committee? How are you sure that proper representation is being made? So it won't be as business as usual. So I'm, I'm, I'm also being told. I'm also being told that um, that the proposal for Ministry of Niger Delta to manage the whole community money that will be the beginning of April. Hmm. So do you think the challenge here really would be about implementation? That's if the three percent would actually be you know begin to go to host communities and all the promises of the PIA be, be realized. So I didn't get that. I'm asking now that, do you think the challenge of the PIA will be about the implementation? Will be an extension of what? Will be the implementation of the PIA. Yeah, implementation will be a problem, yes. Uh, yes, I, I, I hear about implementation. There should be a solid, well thought out, planned out implementation of it. That is the only way uh, people will also enjoy the act. For example, if the host community money is not well managed, the masses will still suffer. Therefore, there should be a sound management of the 3%. There should also be a sound uh, management of the act itself. Several commissions are being set up under the act to manage the several sectors of it. That they must be credible people, not the replica of NMPC of, uh, or replica of NGVC. Um, um, so implementation must be carefully done. Yeah. Um, Mr. Abonta, uh, quickly also share with us um, what figure you think would have been better. You know, if we're going to move up from 3%, where do you think or what percentage do you think would have been a lot better or more comfortable for the Niger Delta? I didn't get that. I'm asking if you were going to move away from 3% and you want to take it higher, what percentage of uh, funds do you think would have you know, sat right with the Niger Delta? Well, I, I, I'm, of, I, I'm of the uh, House of Representatives. We, we proposed, we, we, we passed 5%. The senators passed 3%. And the speaker, in one of his utterances, asked us to 
harmonize and take the part of uh, rest. And coming by representation, the rest represent more. So their fashion ought to have been correct because they truly represent the people. So how it came considerably that the snake version became the author of the day is what we don't, some of us don't understand. Given the, 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 the injunction given by Suga that the Commission Committee to adopt the house version. All right, Mr. Bonta, I also want us to address the issue of the Niger Delta youth and um, the seeming violence, you know, how it seems that they take to violence, really, when they want to, um, um, you know, just talk about their grievances. Um, for example, they have threatened to destroy all installations. This is nothing new. We've heard and seen this time and time again. How would you advise you to the Niger Delta to better, you know, talk about what really bothers them without, you know, going to um, or taking other violent means like burning all installations, um, vandalizing pipelines and all of that? No, violence is, and destruction of oil destruction may not be the best approach. I, I will advise against that. We must continue to negotiate and bargain. Violence will set us back. Violence and destruction of oil destruction will also require more funds to set up again. No, I do not think it's the best option. I should think that superior agreement uh, will begin to negotiate and bargain and lobby and negotiate and lobby. That's what I think. I don't think violence will be the best approach now. I know they are hurting. I know they are grieved. Uh, but I will beg for a little time for us to begin to study the act properly and the implementation of the act properly and see whether there will be a departure from what used to be. So I will beg them to allow some time and give um, the, the government a little time to look at issues and think, and then implement the act. Let us see. Uh, a few periods of a year or two, the administration will tell us uh, the deficit or advantage or whatever it is. Then one will be better positioned to say this is it or this wasn't there. All right. Uh, Mr. Bonta, you mentioned 5%. You know, when I was asking what percentage you felt would be better. Um, just a random question. The 5% is still smaller than 30%. So why do you think that that would have reduced the agitation? Now, 5% was what they grudgingly agreed to do. I mean, the House of Representatives haven't seen all the indications. So okay, let us start from that a certain point. If you look at the paper, it was 7 and a half. Mutually, if you look at the draft paper, the house made seven and a half. You see, until all, after all the argument and consideration, it came to five percent, and then Senate to change it further. We are not saying five percent is ideal, but if the barest minimum the house didn't fit, then having considered all, having done their own mathematics, so this mathematics now by the government also should be made public to mm -hmm. us. Having used, used our own mathematics and all methodology, uh, 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 we're able to arrive at 5% as not the 7 and half contained in our book. Yeah, okay. So, so Mr. Issue. Uzoma Nkema-Bonta, so, so now let's get a clearer picture. Um, when there were these mathematical calculations, you know, do you have a, a, you know, an idea, a rough estimate of what you know, the um, amount of money may have been getting to these oil communities, oil prison communities, you know, if 5% had no, been approved, or 7.5%. I, 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 I do not have the, the amount of the figure that will go to the community. But when you're talking about community, it ranges to every oil well that is in a community, not to one community. Yeah. But it runs to some, some millions of uh, uh, Naira, not to millions of Naira, not one community. And then, if you look at the, whole, the description of host community, you understand. The description of host community, again, it's not defined, not clear. Wherever the pipeline passes, it's host community. So that one is not yet. So if you are taking pipeline now to to Ghana, those areas that get to Ghana is host community. So you look at the distinction of host community again before before you begin to look at the amount to see it's powerful. Okay. Mr. Uzoma and Kemabonta, House of Reps, Abia State, we thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a break here. I'll be right back. Stay with us.
great to have you back here uh, on The Breakfast in PLOS TV Africa. The conversation continues, and that is with the Niger Delta opposition to the Petroleum Industry Act. We're now joined by Mujahid Asari Lukubo, a former um, uh, leader of the Movement for the Emancipation of the Niger Delta, MEND. Uh, Mr. Dukubo, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Great to have you on The Breakfast um, well, once again. Uh, we just got off, you know, a conversation with a House of Reps uh, member from uh, Abia State, and he has uh, he shared his views uh, with regards to the agitation against the Petroleum Industry Act. Um, but we would first of all like to get yours, you know, and understand clearly where you stand uh, with regards to the act. Do you also think that it is an unfair act that was signed, and the president shouldn't have given assent to it? The Petroleum Act. Uh, it's not different from the Jim Crow's laws in, in the southern part of the United States of America, leading up to the civil, uh, civil rights struggle, or the apartheid law in, uh, in former South Africa or Rhodesia, and uh, the discriminatory laws in Myanmar, discriminating against the Rohingya Muslim and the Zionist laws in uh, apartheid Israel. Okay, can you explain further? Why, why, why do you describe it that way? There has never been any law that has been so cruel and wicked, so vindictive like this law. In every federation, except this abnormal contraption called Nigeria. What you have is a semi-autonomous region coming together as the building block of the nation. They have almost absolute control over their resources and uh, other areas of law, making laws for themselves, and so on. And what we have in the 1960 and 1963 computer is very clear. We have the exclusive list, we have the residual list, and we have the concurrent list. These are areas of legislation. Now, after the 1967 coup, uh, we now have a unitary system of government masquerading as a federal government. But at no time had any government gone far as totally excluding the rights of the people to their resources as this dictatorial government had done. Because, it's very clear, you allow Zanfara and other northern states to have exclusive access to the resources beneath the soil of their state. While you deny the people of the oil bearing state in the South East and South South and South West from having not exclusive rights, but you totally confiscate these rights from them and now invest it in a unitary uh, government in Abuja. Mr. These laws, I don't think there is any part of the world that there are these laws, uh, there are such laws. Even in Saudi Arabia and, and in the Gulf states, which are monarchies. Okay, Mr. 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 Sarik, I want you yes. to give me um, specific parts of the PIA that you disagree with. I don't, I, well, from the highlight of what I have, I, I have read in the papers, because it's so annoying that Anybody can go and read that piece of cheap legislation. From what I have seen, 3% is given to oil bearing communities, 30 percent is given to look for oil, 30 percent of the resources of other people is okay. given Mr. to Mr. Nokobo, 30 percent for oil. Mr. Nokobo, could you tell me 30 percent of what and three percent of what? If you give me, if you can be very specific with me, please. Three percent. This when journalists ask questions, you already know about it. So you asking, we are not in a class. We are not in a, a lecture class. You know that three percent 
was assigned to oil bearing community. I mean, three percent of what? That that's that's the question, really. Three percent of total uh, proceeds uh, from oil is committed to uh, oil bearing community. Now, these oil bearing communities have now been further expanded and defined as anywhere where oil pipeline pass through. Right. The Maybe. people of uh, uh, Abonima did not have to worry and it's so hot to be pipeline through Bombay State or be pipeline through Lagos State. It is they who be pipeline through Lagos State. They cannot now take the resources of Abonima and give to Bombay and Lagos State. Okay, Mr. Dokubo, oh, Mr. Dokubo, yes. um, actually, wh when we look through the PIA, we discover um, some things that actually challenge the information we thought we knew about the PIA. So unlike what you believe that the 3% is 3% of, you know, money that, you know, um, profits, according to how you described it, um, it's actually 3% of operational expenditure that will be going to the oil communities, the host communities in the Niger Delta. And that the 30% is actually coming from the profit oil and profit gas of the NNPC. So I've been asking you 3% of what exactly, because I wanted to find out if you know that there's actually a difference in the source of the funds, in the source of the 3% and the source of the 30%. So the, the funds are not exactly the same thing because their sources are different. So when we break down the 3% and 30%, you know, based on statistics we have from 2019, we find that the 3% in actual fact would give you actually much more money because it's from the operational expenditure of the NNPC, which would be about 200 million, 200 billion Naira, you know, with 2019 estimates. And that the 30% of profit oil, profit gas would give you about just 60 billion from 2019 estimates. So I want us to be clear that the source of the 3% and 30% is, is not the same pool. So uh, I, I don't know dear, what you have to say about uh, that and if that challenges how you see the PIA. My dear, let people not insult our sensibility. The money did not fall from heaven. Sorry? The, res the resources, the money, according to an NPC, did not fall from heaven. It is extracted from somewhere. It is a proceed from the extraction from Abodima, from Soku, from Brass that account for 60 billion or whatever for, uh, to carry out exploration and search for new oil deposits. Yeah, but it did not fall. An NPC does not have any cover. An NPC does not have any money anywhere. It is from the soil of this place that this uh, money comes from. Exactly. Yeah, but Mr. Mr. Dukubo, 200 billion. Yes. Ex exactly what you said, the NNPC doesn't have any money anywhere. I mean, the news is obvious that the NNPC really is not profitable. So if the 30% is coming from profit oil, profit gas, and we already know that NNPC is not profitable. You know, from the 2019 estimates, we saw that their funds really, the profit oil, profit gas, accounted for just 0.6% in 2019. So what is going to be 30% of 0.6% if we have the same figures in 2021? So, so really, what, what are we saying, Mr. Dukubo? I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that you understand what I'm saying. If you understand what I'm saying, it is very clear that this money comes from a place. This money does not just drop from the sky. It, come, it comes from a place. And where it comes from, you cannot legislate without consulting the people of this area. When you want to take, uh, when you want to make laws that affect the people of this dimension, that affect the environment, affects our life living, affects our lifestyle. It must go beyond the chambers of the two uh, houses and in Abuja, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The people must be consulted because it is their destiny that you are, you are legislating upon. You cannot sit in Abuja and make a fiat 
how many thousand people are there? We are the people of the region consulted. The people of the oil bearing communities consulted before these laws will be made to take their resources, their money, their environment, yeah. and, do, and go to search for oil elsewhere. All right, so, 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 so Mr. Dukubo, you have a challenge with the Nigerian government using funds that is generated from the uh, Niger Delta to search for oil anywhere else in Nigeria. Yes, I do. It's not different from colonialism. It's not different from uh, England coming here in the guise of colonialism and, uh, and siphoning our republic transferring our resources to uh, London. It is not different from Germany going to Namibia, siphoning the resources of Namibia to, 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 uh, to Delhi. It's the same thing. But, but this is internal colonialism. Mr. Dokubo, that's different because we are one country. It's not Nigeria to Togo. It's Which country? one, when, one when, Nigeria. When did the people meet? When, where did the people meet to say they want one Nigeria? Where did we meet anywhere in the history of this country that Nigeria met? Has there been any referendum in Nigeria to say that we are one country? One Nigeria was imposed on us by the British and by military fiat. So it is not different from colonialism. Mr. Right, Dokubo. Mr. Dokubo would, you, would you have preferred if there was no 30% oil exploration um, fund. Uh, fund and you know there was more money added or more of uh, the funds were directed towards uh, the oil communities in the Niger Delta would would it have been you know more palatable to say 20 percent of uh, operational expenditure should be going to oil communities in the Niger Delta and you know three percent maybe to oil exploration if you say moral, it does not have such rights. What we are saying that in 1960, when the British left, they left a federal constitution, they left a federal structure which was dismantled by the military. So, this federal structure that is dismantled is what has brought about a very crude and primitive unitary system of government, ended by some people in Abuja which has aided them immorally to steal the resources of the Gonis, the Shaklis, the Jaws, the Robos, and the Ibos. Um, but, um, Mr. Dokubo, lastly, are you aware that the, the funds we're talking about is not going to the north like, like is widely believed? It's also for oil exploration in, in states like Anambra, in you know, Lagos, in Ogun, in Ondo, Eboi. So it's not just in the north. That is not... That is... That is you cannot take resources from the zombie and go to any put to go and explore oil. If the federal government wants to let them sell the concession, the OML, to foreign uh, oil uh, exploration uh, corporation to come and do it. But Mr. Dukubo, would you agree that it's this kind of thinking that divides us? This this thinking that some would say is not Why nationalistic. Why should we not be divided? Why should you take my own and give another person? And they give us reward. Why should I give to somebody and the person will not give me? Why should somebody tell me that he will use my land to grace his house? He will use my business. I will always give him and he will not give me. What sort of unity do you want? Unity of one giving, one slaving for the other. What sort of unity is that? Hmm. So, um, so, Mr. Dukobo, uh, so does that mean that you are standing with? the Niger Delta youths and, you know, militant groups who have threatened to cause chaos and destroy oil, you know, um, infrastructure, if this PIA stands? Most of these people are criminals, masquerading and struggling for the region. The Yanadua came and bribed them, they took bribes, and pursued our struggle in the name of Ames. So if they come out to say that they are uh, threatening to do this thing, I don't buy into it. Okay. What I believe is that 100% of a step they sell out for a minister to come out to, to, to say what he has said, 
is so appalling that the oil companies will leave. So a minister from the region is serving the interests of multinational oil companies. He's promoting new colonialism in, in his own region against his own people. He's promoting foreign interests against his own people. A minister from the region is so shameful. Uh, Mujahid Asari Dokubo, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Always interesting speaking with you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right. So up next on The Breakfast, we'll be speaking about a 22-year-old lady who has been termed an IPOP spy girl. Do stay with us.